morning guys so we are here today we are freezing bell peppers and banana peppers y'all come with us on our journey um we may even make some cowboy candy i don't know we'll see i still have a lot of jalapenos in the garden and cayenne and habaneros are producing still along with the bell peppers and the banana peppers so let's get to it all right so we picked a bunch of banana peppers we've already chopped up some guys we still have much more bell peppers to go through and we've already cut up a bunch as well and the next thing on the list after bell peppers is potatoes again because we got to put up all those potatoes we harvested so let's get to it all right so here we are we are in our lovely book again um this book has um canning freezing and dehydrating in it so we just turn to the contents table and here we go we are going to put up peppers. As you can see, there's a lot of ways to put up peppers. So we're going to go with sweet because we have banana peppers as well. Um, we have bell peppers and banana peppers that we're putting up. So we're going to go to page 81. We're going to go to page 235. And we're going to go to page 201. So let's get looking. Page 81. <clears throat> sweet peppers. If we wanted to can them, which I, I don't know if I want to can them or not. I think I'm just going to freeze them um, and dehydrate them because I like to just throw them in the pot. Canning them goes ahead and cooks them. Um, and all I would have to do is kind of reheat them. But I kind of like the process of cooking the flavor in. So we will probably freeze or dehydrate. So this is what you would do if you were canning them. Okay, now we, like I said, will be can dehydrating and freezing. So page 201 is the freezing method. Okay, pay turn to page 201. It's here somewhere. There we go. Sweet peppers. Here we go. It says to use firm, tender, crisp, thick walled peppers. Um, wash them, cut them in half, cut out the stems, cut them in strips, rings, or chop them. Um, whatever you desire. You can also freeze them as a half bell pepper or a quarter. Um, pack them into your container. Don't leave any headspace. Vacuum seal them if you want, in other words, and throw them in the freezer. You can blanch them also if you want. We are not. You know me, I'm all about less work. Okay? So, now, let's turn to, I think it was 255. Nope, it was not 255. What page was it for the dehydrating? It was 235. Eyes close. I remember to five. All right, so chop them. And don't even worry about pre treating. Throw them in the dehydrator or the oven or outside in the sun on a screen. <coughs> So we have a dehydrator and we have an onion oven, so we will probably do one of both of these. Um, spread them out on a cookie sheet and put them in the oven. Uh, it does not say what temperature, though. So we're going to go look at general steps to drying on page 218 there. Okay, general steps to drying. Wash them, select good fruit, trim away damage. Pre-treat the food if recommended. For sun drying, place cheesecloth or netting on the drying rack, then place the food in the trays, and then cover that with a rack as well. For the oven, manufacturer's oven uh, instructions. That doesn't tell me a temperature either. 
Well, hmm. See how to oven dry. How to oven dry. Maintain a constant temperature of 140 with the door propped open so that the moisture can escape. Yep. Oh, if, put it at the lowest setting, in other words, and use a thermometer. Okay, so that's how we do it in the oven. We have a dehydrator also. Here we go. Follow the manufacturer's instructions, as always. So that's what we're going to do, guys. We may put some in the oven, see how they do, and we may put some in our dehydrator to see how they do. And um, we are definitely going to freeze some, so let's get to it, guys. We've already got a bunch chopped up, so let's, let's do some stuff with them. All right, so first things first, we are going to put a load in the oven. It said no more than six pounds. So we're going to spread this on here. Individual, one single layer. And then we're going to put it in the oven. We've already turned the oven on to its lowest setting, which on our oven is warm. Um, I don't have a thermostat for the oven, though. So we're just going to take our chances. You Generally, you would want an oven thermometer to where you can put it in there and see how it's doing. All right, guys. There we go. Okay. And we're going to leave the door cracked to where it will not keep the moisture in. All we want it to do is dry. All right, we're gonna throw some in the dehydrator now. Now, with doing this in the dehydrator, well, I gotta wash this stuff, so we'll be back. All right, so this is our dehydrator. I need to wipe out the inside from the last time we dehydrated, but as you can see, there's a fan in the back and all your racks go on these rows and it blows the air through creating a, it blows the air through and pulls the moisture off at the same time, helps the stuff to dry out. Um, it is digital, so mine is unplugged at the moment, but you start and stop it here, you set the time and temperature here, um, up and down, and the readouts here. So, that is that is what we have for a dehydrator. We also have the um, plastic round that stacks up but this is the one I use. This is the racks for mine and as you can see these holes are kind of big. Now what happens is stuff sits on here for now but as it dries it shrivels up. So we use the silicone sheets on top of that and this will allow the stuff to shrivel up like it needs to do and not fall through the pan. Okay, so we will fill these up and put a silicone sheet on top of each rack and then load up our dehydrator. As you can see, we had to cut these sheets down to fit the racks. So there we go, one rack. Now it did come with a flat pan like this. This is for making like fruit roll-ups or things like that. And it also came with one of these as well. Um, I like this, but I really like this better. This I can roll up and store easier. This has to be dry, um, stored flat. All right, guys, come back with us.
All right, these are done. Let's take a look at them. Nice and dried up. See why you want that silicone mat? All these pieces would have fell right through. When you're dehydrating, all the pieces get smaller. All right, so we'll take these and we'll put them in some Ziploc bags and then we'll just dump them into another jar just to be, you know, double safe. And we will use these as we go, um, cooking and soups and stuff like that. Now let's go check out the other set. All right, we pulled this set out of the oven. You can see there's a difference here. These got cooked instead of dehydrated. So these, I'm going to go ahead and put in stuff now because they didn't do right. Um, so if you have the ability to use a dehydrator, as you can see, it is definitely the much better option than using your oven. The dehydrator is designed for the airflow and the temperature and the length of time it runs um, for the low temperatures that it requires to dehydrate versus the oven. So the oven at that low of a temperature is very unpredictable and I did not put a thermometer in there so or a thermostat or whatever you want to call it um, to, to gauge how hot the oven was being and it was on its lowest setting so it wasn't like there was anything I could have done except turn the oven off um, so that's very unpredictable and as you can see one of the tips I need to give you is make sure your pieces are even sizes because the big ones will not dry out when the little ones dry out, okay? All right, guys, if you like what we're doing, make sure you give us a like, leave us a comment, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. It'll tell you when new videos come out. New videos come out on Tuesdays and Fridays. Mark's Fireside Chat's coming out on Fridays. And y'all be on the lookout for some of our new um, coffee cups and things like that. Um, we do have them for sale now with different types of logos and images on them. Um, Y'all, we will see you all later. Bye, guys.